Hey there, welcome to day 24. In this one, we're gonna be talking about sending SMS text messages using Python and the Twilio service. Now, when we wanna send text messages to our customers or our users, we need to do it in a way that's familiar to them. And that's simply sending a text message to their phone number using a phone number of our own. And that's what we'll be doing. Now, to actually get this going, it's not free like email can be, right? So you can't just sign up for a phone number and start sending things out. You actually have to register one through a proper service and proper channels to make sure that all the other phone numbers can you know, know about what that phone number is. And that's one of the reasons that we use Twilio. The other reason is actually sending SMS text messages. You would need to come up with an agreement with the phone service providers around the world to actually make these sms text messages go through so again none of this stuff's free twilio makes it all simple and easy um, as you'll see in just a moment um, so the first thing that we need to do is actually sign up for a twilio account now if you use this link right here we will both get ten dollars after you create an account um, i think you actually have to become a customer of theirs and then then we'll get a ten dollar credit each you don't have to do that of course they will give you a i think a 10 or 15 dollar credit anyway for free to get this going they're not sponsoring this i just use their service all the time because it's one of the best if not the best ways to send sms text messages so let's go ahead and get started now first and foremost i'm going to assume that you've been following along and day 24 is not a whole lot different than any of the other days the main thing for me is that i already created a Jupyter Notebook to run the code that we want to run. And that Jupyter Notebook is here. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that you've already created an account on Twilio and you are ready to get your account keys. So when you log into Twilio, it's gonna send you a text message to verify your account. So yeah, you need a real actual um, you know, cell phone or a phone number that it can text message. Even another Twilio account works, but you definitely need something to verify that you have access to SMS messages. So what we need to do now is actually grab our account SID and our auth token. Now, this isn't actually the only way to work with the Twilio API. If we had a web application, something like Django or Flask or Fast API, we could actually use that to get authentication keys, but we don't have those things, so we're just gonna be using these two keys right here. So let's go ahead and copy them and bring them into our notebook. Now, all of this stuff is on GitHub by the time you're watching this, so you can always download and clone this um, too. And what we wanna do is actually set our credentials up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this by using the git pass argument here. Now, this is just a, a safe way to share and move around keys and account IDs and all that. Uh, I actually save it into my creds.json. Um, so it's actually inside of there and you would actually be able to see what that value is, which here, let me just show you what I mean by that. If I put in some fake values here, I use exclamation mark cat and then creds.json. They're showing my credentials there. I actually don't remember if cat works on windows, but it definitely works on Mac. Um, so since we have this file, I'm going to actually bring in my proper stuff here. So the SID and then the auth token. All right. So cool. Now I've got those things. Let's go ahead and install Twilio with pip install Twilio. Uh, Twilio actually has more things than just this, right? So you can use the Twilio command line interface as well, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't need that for what we're doing here. Okay, so I'm going to comment that out because I don't need that to be ran again. Uh, and then I'm going to reload my credentials in here. Uh, so this one's really simple. So you can just say something like the Twilio SID and put it equal to an empty string and then the Twilio secret also to an empty string. And then we just want to, you know, unpack what's inside of creds.json. This is for reusability because now in the future, I don't actually need to reset my credentials. 
and change that one to false. This time, instead of that, it would be the raw data equals to f dot read, and then the cred data equals to json dot loads, and that's the raw data. So I stored it in as json, and then the Twilio SID is equal to cred data dot get Twilio SID, and the secret being the cred data dot get that secret. Okay, just a way to hide our credentials. Again, you don't actually have to do that, but um, I think it's advisable to start getting in the habit of hiding our credentials. Now, there's a couple things that we need to do here. To actually send a message, we need to get a phone number. So my phone number, you know, what's this? How do we set this? We'll do that in a moment. And then we need another number. And if you're on a trial account, you actually have to use a verified phone number, another verified phone number. So in my case, I'm just going to use a, another test account that I have going, um, which will probably not work for you. So you'll have to use probably your personal number that you verified your Twilio account with. Uh, but this is my other number, right? So United States number. Now, Twilio works all around the world. So, you know, adjust your number accordingly. This, this might as well be a personal number, but it's not. Uh, so now we need to actually register our own number. Now this is really simple to do. Going back into the Twilio console, uh, we go on the left-hand side here, looking for phone numbers. Now you can always pin this to the, to the top or the dock, and then we can also pin the SMS if we want. Now if I go into phone numbers here, this is also really easy. You just click here to buy a new number. It costs a dollar a month to just own the number. It has nothing to do with how many things you send or make phone calls or anything like that. It just, you just have to do that to buy a number. Now I already have one selected and all that because it's pretty straightforward on how to do it. Uh, so I'm going to be using this phone number to actually send my messages. So my number is that. Okay. So uh, we actually now have everything we need to send a message. So what I'm going to do now is actually send that message. The message itself i'll just go ahead and say hello world as the body string and then the message will be equal to the client or rather we need to initialize the client as well and we already installed twilio so we just go from twilio.rest import the client class and then we create the client class by passing in our credentials up here I'm actually going to move the location as to where these are to right under load credens or creds. Okay. So now we've got a client here. So inside of our client, we'll just go ahead and say message. And this of course is the Twilio message instance. So we could write Twilio in there if we want. So I do client dot messages dot create. And then we have to pass in three parameters. One is the body the actual message of the text message itself. Another is the from, and you have to use an underscore here because as you know, Python has a built-in operator for from, so you have to use an underscore. And then we say what number, so my number. Now your account might have a lot of different numbers, which is another reason why our messages, by default, you actually have to add in a number there. Um, slightly different than like if you were sending an email, Usually when you log in to the client, it's, it's likely going to use your default email uh, if you were using an email service. Now, the other number is just going to be set to the two, per, the, uh, two argument. And there we go. Uh, and boom, I just sent a message and sent another one. <laughs> Not that big of a deal. Um, that is what Twilio does, is it makes it really, really easy to actually send messages. Now, what actually happens with our phone number, right? So if somebody were to send a message back, what, what's going on? Well, if we go back into our numbers, so into phone numbers and click that phone number, your active phone number, scroll down. And what you've got here are several different handlers, right? So voice and fax, we're not covering that. Uh, messaging, as in text messaging. What happens when you get a message, a webhook can be triggered. Uh, in this case, it's just a demo. So when we now get a message, so if you were to grab your 
phone number, the one inside of your Twilio account and text it from your cell phone or rather any of your friends text it from your cell phone, it's actually going to trigger a webhook. I'll explain what that is in just a moment. That goes to this URL and what that webhook does is grabs the data about that message and then sends back a response of some kind or none at all. So you don't actually have to handle the webhook. You can just be silent. In other words, I could send a bunch of text messages to this phone number and it can be absolutely silent. So that's actually how we would go about receiving those messages, which is why I'm not covering it here because that requires us to build something to handle our webhook, which is definitely a little bit more advanced than, than what we're trying to do here. Um, but really a lot of your communication is going to be one way. Anyway, you're going to be sending out a message. You're not going to be handling a lot of incoming messages early in your service. I mean, maybe you will, but there's a good chance that you won't be. Now, if you are actually wanting to handle these messages in a different way, or at least review them without doing a webhook, you can do that by using something uh, that is really simple and built in into this API, which is actually listing out these messages. Now I'm gonna ignore some sensitive numbers in here, and that's what this is. You don't have to do that. It's just gonna be a list of ignored numbers. And so what I wanna do is a couple things. First of all, let's go ahead and grab my previous message details, right? So let's say for instance, I wanna grab uh, this message right here. Now every message has an SID attached to it. So we can say MSG SID equals to that, that actual message instance dot SID. And this is the unique ID for this particular message. As far as I know, every single message will have a SID, right? So it'll have its own unique ID that's associated to that specific message. Whether you're sending it or receiving it, you'll get that specific message. So to reinitialize the instance itself, we can actually grab it by saying MSG context, or the message context, is gonna be the client.messages.get, and then we use that MSG SID, and then that we can then get the message instance. This is the same thing as what we've got up here, and you would just say the message context fetch okay so then in that we could actually see what's going on inside of that message like the body itself right so body is right there so i can say message instance dot body and this will show me no wait let's not get the the dir here but rather just the body this actually shows me the actual message body that went notice that i'm using a trial account so it appended this data uh, but hello world is actually what i sent so we could try that again and say, hello world again. I send another one. Um, this right here should be that same SID for the message I just sent. So I run this again and I see that body message again. So that's a little bit more detail of that specific body. Um, but I can also see, you know, to and from, right? Pretty cool. So what I can also do is actually iterate through a list of recent messages. So all of my recent messages, um, it's, or a, you know, a certain limit that is, so messages equals to client dot messages dot list. And you can say limit equals to 20. You can also add a from argument in here or even a to argument. So that way, if you wanted to look for messages from a specific phone number, you could pass it in here uh, just like that, uh, which is pretty cool. So this is gonna give you a bunch of different messages. Oops. And let's go ahead and iterate through them. So I'm gonna go ahead and say for I and record in messages, or rather let's enumerate this. That way we can get the index value itself. I'll go ahead and say print I and then we'll print the record body. Okay. I run that and there we go. So I'm getting these various messages in here, right? Uh, which is pretty cool. So this is messages that I did outside of recording this, uh, but it's now showing me the recent list of messages. Um, and I could also grab a couple things. I'm just gonna mention this real quick. So first and foremost, uh, to grab who it's from, you just do dot from, 
uh, who it's to, like who you sent it to or who it was sent to, you would do two. And I have those ignore numbers, so this will actually block out that data. So we'll say to and from. And I run that, and there we go. Uh, so it's now showing me uh, these messages. Okay, so if you want to know, hey, did I send these messages, right? It's really simple. You're just going to go and say that if the from record is you, so from me equals to false, and then if the from equals to my number, then we'll say from me equals to true, and then I can print out from me. Okay, so again, true, 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 right? So if I wanted it to not be from me, well, that's simple. I could, I could also change the from here and put it to the other number. Now, I don't know if I actually have any messages from the other number, but we can try it. I do not, right? So I have no messages from the other number. So we can say, hey, that number is ghosting me. I have never been able to use them. And what about to the other number? Well, of course I have other ones from the other number or to the other number, and that's these, right? So I just sent a bunch of these right now, and these are all from me, right? Which makes sense, right? So it always makes sense that the from record would come from, you know, one of your own accounts. Um, but of course, in the sense that if you had other phone numbers, this would be how you could kind of separate those things out. So in multiple different projects, you would want to have a list of what those numbers are and then you know parse out how that data is going to happen. Uh, that again is going a little bit more advanced than what we are doing here. Uh, but that's it. That's how we actually can send messages, receive messages, um, and also list out and parse those messages. Now, the more advanced thing to do here would be to take what we have learned and actually create a webhook service to actually parse this data out. Uh, that's certainly a great challenge from here and something I hope to cover in the future outside of 30 days of Python. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.